we are standing close to a, a Masi plant and this is what a Masi plant looks like. It, um, they grow tall and the taller the plant, the, the better it is as we use the bark of the Masi to, to, to peel it and open it up and to spread it so that it turns into a fabric that, uh, that we can later use. They grow really fast. As you can see in, in, this, um, in this plant, it was only one tree planted, but you see the, the, the baby crops are just uh, propping up everywhere. So as you harvest it, they start to, to, to multiply. It takes about nine months to, um, to grow into full maturity, and it's ready to be harvested to be processed into a massy fabric. The, the longer, the better, because it dictates the size of the, of the massy that you are trying to process. If it's a shorter one, you can use a, a shorter branch. If you need it for a bigger piece of fabric, then you, you use the longer, the longer branches. They are very resilient. Fiji, we faced a lot of cyclones and a lot of trees got knocked down. And that is one of the great thing about massy is that they, they grow back fast. In communities, in the outer islands that are traditionally massy makers, they grow wild in their island and they use it a lot to uh, wild harvesting to process uh, masi fabric. The selection of the masi uh, that you cut depends on the, the use that you need it for. So as you come to a tree, you look at it, it's not cutting the whole tree, but just choose which one you would need and for what purpose. You cut it and remove the, 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 the leaves or, or the desired length then you cut to the length that you want, then you start peeling it. Eh? Uh, peeling it and it'll be later be spread out uh, and all joined together to make a, a tapa a cloth. The skin of the massy plant is what you need to, to make a tapa cloth. It's flexible and it's easy to be removed. Eh? And as far as the coloring, in the contemporary day and age of uh, using this traditional art, we use the color of, of our community, the, the color of nature, uh, as an inspiration to the color that we want to add in into the product. As you can see, the, the tree with the red leaves, it is called the Vutu Nimbaravi. They grow uh, well along the coast and uh, sometimes in the inland but the inspiration of the red color is what we use to capture it and use it in the final form of a massive flower traditional art. We also have the colors Balekana or the Uto green. The inspiration is the breadfruit trees. The color of the breadfruit, the color of the leaves. In mountain communities there's a lot of makosoi and that's a makosoi plant. We use the yellow flowers in inspiration. Some island communities, the Nawa Nawa, in which you can see the, the orange color. Fijians don't have writing, but this is how we capture uh, and always reference the color, the drawing. In, in our dialect, you know, we, we don't have words to describe the different colors we have, red, green, yellow. Oftentimes when people talk about it's orange, they will say Nawa Nawa. Because of the flowers, it's now now. Eh? They always feel comfortable in referencing the, the the plants that they use as an inspiration. After the uh, masi has been uh, harvested from the forest, it's uh, brought in into the village or at, at your home, and um, that is where the final step of uh, preparing the masi uh, takes place to spread the bark and uh, gently beating it up so that it removes those uh, brown part of, of the bark uh, and to spread out the bark evenly before it's being joined together to make a full piece of masi. So this are uh, normally done um, around the village and in households uh, as they try to prepare the final steps of producing uh, masi before it's then being dried out in the sun for a few days before it turns in into the uh, final piece that is ready uh, for use.